You're listening to Greater Good Radio Hawaii. Please visit us online at greatergoodradio.com. Today's guest is Alan Wong, international restaurant owner, critically acclaimed chef, and community leader. So, Alan, can you continue telling us about your first class, your baking class at the KCC? Well, very inspirational. Once again, you know, my back door into the business. I'm, I've am i already kind of learned how to carve ice, vegetables, and sculpt tallow, and I'm learning how to make uh, salad dressings, breads, cakes, pies from scratch now and really getting turned on by this and really curious. Um, curious is the biggest word for me. I was born the year of the monkey. So Curious George, he's my idol. I think what made me go from dishwasher to busboy to waiter to host to, to all these 10 different jobs was basically curiosity. I always said to myself, what do I have to do to get from here to there if that's what I want to do? So after school, I graduated from KCC. I spent about a year and a half working in the business. I said the same thing to myself. You know, I'm, I'm not satisfied. What can I do to learn more about the business? And this time it's the kitchen side. So I went back to my instructors, actually wanted to go to the CIA, the Culinary Institute of America in New York. And he suggested, why don't you go to West Virginia, apply for an apprenticeship at the Greenbrier Hotel in West Virginia. So I was lucky out of 300 some odd applicants, I was accepted as one of 10 apprentices. So off I go from Honolulu, you know, after I graduated to do my two-year apprenticeship. So I do my two-year apprenticeship, and it was a good thing that I did that because eventually I ended up in New York City, worked at Lutes. At that time, they were always in the top ten in the nation as far as the top restaurants in the country. And according to a couple of reviews, they were number one in the country. I wanted to see what the best was like. I was curious. So from the Greenbrier, West Virginia, I went up to New York City. I'm glad I did that because if I went from Hawaii straight to New York City, it would have been a really big culture shock for me. And I don't know if I would have made it. You know, being on the mainland, uh, away from Hawaii for the first time, you grow a lot emotionally. You get used to being on your own. It kind of prepared me for New York City. So I ended up working at Lutes for about three years. And, uh, you know, chef asked me one day, uh, he says, you know, do you plan on going back to Hawaii? I says, yeah, that's my home. He says, you know, you probably can stay in New York City for the rest of your life for as long as you want. But if you're going to go home, you know, you should start thinking about it. And one day start making plans to go home. So I started making plans to come home. So when I came back home to Hawaii, um, a strange thing happened. You know, I probably came at the wrong time. And nobody was hiring came back home just looking for a sous chef's job. Nobody was hiring. I went four months without a job. And it does a little bit on your, you know, your, your, your psyche or your ego. You think you went away. I went away for like five years. Come back. All I wanted was a sous chef's job, right? And nobody hired. So I eventually ended up at the Moana Surf Rider. Took a job as executive sous chef there for a little while. Then after seven months, I got a call to go to Kauai. The executive chef there met me when I was at the Green Bar. And he brought me over to Kauai as executive sous chef. That was different. You know, neighbor islands are different. The labor market is different. You know, the, the, the employee situation is different. And one of the, the best things that uh, I think that I experienced there was actually starting some classes and a sort of our own apprenticeship program at the hotel at the Waiahai High Resort, which kind of prepped me for my next job, which was I got a call from Kauai, you know, Kapi'olani Community College to go back to teach. So I actually opened the Diamond Head campus back in 1988 as an instructor, as a chef instructor. Then after about a year, almost a year, I'm teaching school, I get a call from the Manalani Bay Hotel asking me if I'd be interested in opening their, their restaurant called the Canoe House. You know, in hindsight, I'm, I'm kind of glad I did that because even though I taught school, I kind of scratched an itch. Uh, I, was, I was still too young to teach. You know, I still needed to be out there, kind of like still trying to, you know, develop my, my cuisine or, uh, you know, stay on the edge. And, you know, well, when you're teaching school, you're teaching something. And you're not so much learning as much as you should yourself. And I was too young to do that. So I went to the Manalani, did the, opened the canoe house in 1989, stayed there till 95, well, 94. Then he opened Alan Wong's restaurant in 95. So we've been in business for almost ten and a half years now. And you have an interesting story to share with us about how you opened your first Alan Wong's restaurant, or when you did. 
a good friend of mine, Dana Cassoni, who's uh, from Waihawa as well, too, he used to come with his wife uh, every once in a while to the Maralani, have dinner at the canoe house. He says, uh, hey, you should go back Honolulu, bro, you know? So he did that a few times, and I finally says, where, how, you know? So he said, uh, let me set something up. So he arranged for me to do dinner. I cooked in a little condo one day after Hurricane Iniki. The day after, I mean, Hawaii was just drenched. I cooked a seven-course dinner for three people with the hopes of uh, I put together a portfolio of, of uh, press clippings and the whole thing and the, in the hopes of them eating dinner and maybe two out of three saying, hey, we like your food, we're going to invest in you and uh, maybe I can come in, open a restaurant in Honolulu. Well, eventually one person says, uh, you know, to me, I think you can do it, and I'm going to do it by myself, and that was Francis Higa, um, the late Francis Higa of uh, Zippies. So he was the one that actually invested in me, and that's how uh, Alan Wong's King Street got to be born. So you were blessed all around because Kauai also got wiped out by Aniki. Um, I feel like I've been blessed all my life, very fortunate. So do you consider yourself, besides blessed, do you, you consider yourself very lucky? Very lucky, yes. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for more on Greater Good Radio.